a week or 10 days ago, critics of the administration um, were saying that President Biden was weak and incompetent because he was somehow failing to impose swift sanctions on Russia, banning their use of the swift uh, currency exchange system. Um, since then, the president has managed to convince every single country in Europe, and a remarkable feat, to do exactly what the critics were asking for, and in fact to do way more than what the critics were asking for. So of course, everyone has forgotten about that, and we're now moving on to new arguments about why the administration is obviously weak and incompetent. The new argument is that there's this massive loophole in the sanctions because we're buying Russian oil. Now, let, let me say, I agree we should not be buying Russian oil. I agree with Representative Fitzpatrick that even a penny is too much, though I wish some of our Republican colleagues were willing to say what he also said, which is that this will, this would lead to an increase in gas prices, and that's worth it because gas prices are not as important as the price of life. Um, but let's have some perspective here. We imported last year, this is the number in your briefing book, $17 billion in one year, $17 billion in, in Russian oil. Just yesterday, in one day, the major energy company in Russia, Gazprom, lost 97% of its value. It lost more than $65 billion in value in one day. Compare that to $17 billion over a year, and that's just one company in one day. So it's a drop in the bucket compared to what the administration has already done. Let's do it, but let's have some perspective. Now, I've got a question also related to Ukraine. Um, and, I, and I'll start by saying the administration, the president, has drawn a line against direct U.S. military involvement in the conflict. And as hard and as painful as it is to watch what is happening right now in Kyiv and Kharkiv, I agree with that decision. The lessons of the Cold War argue for sticking to that line. But I want to ask you about another piece of Cold War history. 1948, the city of Berlin is besieged, blockaded. The United States military starts an airlift. We are flying U.S. military planes over hostile territory, delivering aid to keep the people of Berlin alive. We didn't fire or shoot at the Russians, but we, in effect, dared them to shoot at us, and they didn't. We may very well face a situation like that very soon in, in Kyiv, for example. Imagine if the government, the sovereign government of Ukraine, surrounded on all sides in their capital, asks us to fly to airlift supplies across their territory, their country, into the city. I don't want to ask you if you think we should do that, whether that's a good idea. I know you cannot answer that question. But I wanted to ask you whether you think, as a legal matter or a policy matter, such an action would cross the president's line and constitute U.S. involvement in the war, involvement in hostilities. Uh, so thank you, Congressman. We are all very cognizant that the humanitarian disaster that we are witnessing is likely to get much worse. Not only the refugee flows and the internally displaced persons, but just the mere availability of fresh water, food, blankets, activities of daily living, the things of daily living. Uh, the USAID administrator and Nancy Jackson, the acting head of uh, PRM at the State Department, uh, Population, Refugees, and Migration, uh, were just in Poland and in Brussels uh, working through all of the options we have to ensure humanitarian assistance. And you know well from your own work, uh, both in the administration and here in Congress, uh, that we have lots of options uh, that are under discussion or people will look at humanitarian corridors, uh, ways to make sure provisions get across borders, uh, both overtly and, and perhaps in other ways. Um, and I think we will have to look at every option. But in assessing those options, we want to be very thoughtful about what will be escalatory, what might lead us into a world war which no one wants to see. Uh, and so those are the very difficult 
analyses that will have to be made in the coming days. I understand. I mean, we now have unmanned drones that can deliver supplies. Yes. And I would just say that the beauty Very of the Berlin point. airlift was not just its practical success, but its moral force. And I recognize the dangers, but I think it's something we're going to have to confront fairly soon, and I would advocate for boldness in that situation. Gentlemen, time is expired.